Bro, today we got another good one before I start. Go dogs, always repping. Anyway, we got a good one today, y'all. We doing meatballs. Not any meatballs, but a 50-50 blend of beef and pork. Delicious. Y'all stay tuned right here on the Rolling Grill, baby. Yeah, but got the ground beef and pork blend. This is an 80-20 blend. I get this at Kroger. It's actually really good stuff, man. I mean, I'm talking about you can even make hamburgers with it. It's really good. We got the olive oil, of course. We got the crunchy chili and onion. I get this from Trader Joe's. Really good stuff. And this is my seasoning lineup. We got oregano, parsley, garlic powder, onion powder, Cajun seasoning, and lemon pepper. And I will be using a combination of the panko and the Italian breadcrumbs, man. So that's all I'm using right there, man, to make these meatballs. I like to do it a day ahead of time. This is not gonna be a day ahead of time. No, it's probably gonna be a few hours ahead of time. And mix it in here. Mix as much as you like, man. Put it in the freezer, it'll last a lifetime. So y'all stay tuned, man. Meatballs, 80-20 blend, baby. Pork and beef right here on the rolling grill. Y'all, yeah. here's my meat. Uh, I kind of crumbled it up already. I didn't show the crumbling on camera because some for some reason people seem to think you're supposed to wear gloves in your own house. I ain't doing that shit. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and take our seasonings and I'm just gonna mix them all in there, just like this. And I'm gonna get in there and get the mixing anyway, it don't even matter. Next, I'm gonna go in with the breadcrumbs. I don't measure on no meatballs. I'm not gonna put a lot, but I'm gonna put enough. And I forgot one thing, man, an egg. You will need an egg. So let me go ahead and get the egg, and let me open this box of panko, and I'll show y'all the rest, stay tuned. All right, y'all, that is my one beaten egg. I just wanna show y'all what this crunchy chili onion looks like. This stuff is the truth, man. You get it from Trader Joe's, you can put it in your eggs or anything. It's been in the refrigerator, so it's kind of set up a little bit, but it's just got a nice little flavor to it, man. I'm gonna take like one big dollop of that, throw it in there. Okay, so I'm gonna go in there and do another one. Okay, leave that spoon in there. And I still gotta open my pancos, hold on. Oh, you know what? We'll do the panko last. Let's go ahead and add the egg in there. And I'm gonna mix this going high speed because I don't want to hear the people, oh, you didn't wash your hands, oh, you. Whatever. All right, stay tuned with the panko. The panko, Japanese breadcrumbs. As you can see right there, Japanese style breadcrumbs. Um, to me, uh, a lot different than these breadcrumbs. Well, it just adds a nice little bite to it. I'm not gonna put that much in there. And I know it may look like a lot, but you gotta remember, this is two pounds. This is literally two pounds of meat in there and I'm making enough to hold in the refrigerator. So, let me go ahead and speed the camera up, get this going. I just want to give y'all a close up. It's mixed well, trust me. I know some of y'all probably like, why you didn't put fresh garlic in there? Why you didn't put onions in there? All that's gonna be in my sauce. So the, gun, the onion powders work perfect with the meat. And then I use the fresh stuff in the sauce, man. But that's it. So I'm gonna let this sit in the refrigerator. Like I say, best overnight, but I'm gonna let it sit in the refrigerator. I'll show y'all what it looks like when I start forming these meatballs. And I'm gonna cook one off and do a little taste test. Cause you should always do a taste test first to make sure you got the right seasoning in there. Stay tuned. You gotta do that, man. You gotta see what it tastes like. So y'all stay tuned and see what it tastes like. All right, let's taste it. Mmm, hot. Good. Season perfect. After tasting the meat for the meatballs, I decided I ain't going to meatballs. I'm gonna do a bacon wrap with some low sodium bacon a bacon wrap meatloaf, baby, instead of meatballs. Y'all stay tuned, it's about to go down now. Yeah, boy. Saran wrap on some butcher paper. This is what we're going to roll everything up in. So just wanted y'all to see that. First, let's roll this bacon out. All right, we're gonna kind of stretch the bacon a little bit. Hopefully y'all can see this. 
If not, I'll show it to you when I'm finished. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up. But basically I'm just overlapping each one of the bacons and I'll show you this in a minute. This is the bacon. See how I overlapped it? This one, that was on top of that one, and so on. And so now, and I'm gonna use the saran wrap to roll it. And so now, we're gonna go ahead and add our meat. Stay tuned. All right, now I'm going to start with the clear wrap, pressing the bacon that way. All right. And then, the uh, now keep in mind, I didn't say this yet, but this is the, gonna be the bottom part of the meatloaf. So the seams will be on the bottom. And then we're gonna Pull this on over. And while it's in the clear wrap, you can start forming it up a little bit as well. Okay. You can fold this over. Alrighty. All right, so now I'm gonna put this back in the refrigerator, let it set up a little bit. And then I'll show you what it looks like once I flip it over. All Stay right, tuned. guys, here we have it. Got the brisket, not brisket, I'm sorry. Got the meatloaf wrapped up real good. I had to put it in the refrigerator so it could lock up and the bacon could get cold as well. Now we're gonna unwrap it. I hope y'all can see this. Let's see if y'all can see this. Uh, let's see. Can y'all see it? All right. And again, this is the bottom side, so let me flip it over. I just want to let y'all see it real quick. Get everything seamed up real good. Like I said, this is the bottom side, so we're not worried about that. All right, let me flip it over and show y'all. All right, so. I don't want to drop it. All right, so I'm just going to roll it over. And get this around, right? I'm up in here. There we go. All right. I'm going to get you out to see this. All right, let me show you. And there we have it. Bacon wrap meatloaf. Now what I will do is probably put a little bit of, this is low sodium bacon. So I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of Cajun dust. I ain't gonna go too crazy on it. All right. Hit it with a little bit of uh, oregano. All right. Everything preheated to 390. All right. We're gonna let it sit in there for about 25 minutes. We'll check it and then see if we need to crisp that bacon up under broil. Stay tuned. All right, guys, not sure what happened to my sound. Just wanted to show y'all what it looked like a few minutes into cooking. You can already see that bacon fat starting to render. All right, guys, and here is the finished product. I let it sit in there for probably about 40 minutes. I did put it under the broiler just a few minutes to crisp up that bacon. 
but it came out beautiful. I did want to mention that if you had a rack, that'd be the best way to cook it. That way all that bacon fat can just render under the bottom. But it came out, like I said, it came out looking beautiful. All right, guys, and now let's start cutting. All right, guys, thank y'all for tuning in. And now let's get this thing plated up. All right, guys, I'm going to finish this thing off with some beautiful buttery mashed potatoes and some beautiful green beans. As always, thank y'all for joining me here at the Rolling Grill, y'all. Good food, good vibes. Yeah, boy.